Welcome to episode 28 of Rebirth Revolution. My name is Melissa Olson. Let me open by sending love and compassion to everyone affected by the pandemic and everything that entails. We have seen changes in and around us unlike anything we have seen before, and it's all happening at a dizzying rate. Everything about our lives has been called into question. That, in itself, is highly unusual. Usually, we have one thing at a time pulled forth for our examination. This event puts everything in play. No one said a rebirth would be painless. No one said it would be fun. But this is the time of a rebirth, so this pandemic is a powerful tool to turn many things around. It is human nature to want to leave well enough alone. We rarely want to rock the boat. That's why parts of our lives can go unexamined forever. It's only when things are broken or blow up or end that we are forced to come up with a plan to do it a different way. The rebirth is about doing things a different way. A better way. A way that lifts up everyone. I realize that this moment is scary and isolating and anxiety producing, but we are in this together, so we are all invested in turning it into a big gain for all of us. Once this pandemic has subsided, we will have a much clearer vision of what we want the world to look like. We have all gotten off the hamster wheel at the same time. We have been dropped back into our lives, the ones that we've been able to avoid and distance ourselves from, just enough to be willing to stay in them as they are. We will be put inside a building with the other people in our life, and that may bring up some things that surprise you. It will lead to an examination of what is happening in your own universe while we wait out the virus in the universe at large. You may have a husband who is home from work and has no sports to fall back on. You may have school children who you instantly have to begin homeschooling. You may have first responders and medical personnel in your family who you won't see for large chunks of time. You may have people in your home who are battling the virus. Many have people in their home who are the most at risk should they be infected. We have been temporarily stripped of our identities as we knew them. We are no longer that person who does that thing in that place where we've done it forever. Who are you if you can't do what you do? We are having thrust upon us an identity that may feel entirely new and a tad uncomfortable. We are a member of one school, a school that involves everyone on this planet, and we are all taking a course that is the same for everyone, no matter where they live or what they do. One part of the lesson we are currently experiencing is that we have been reminded that our actions ripple out into the greater population. This is happening at a deeper level than we're used to. We're used to thinking that if we, an individual, are sick and cough into the face of another person, we would spread our sickness to that person. We are now being told that many people are walking about who are carriers of the virus and that those people may not ever feel sick or they may be a walking Petri dish who feels fine and doesn't go into full-blown symptoms until many days after you saw them. This is next level. People are being asked to stay away from others, even if they are young and strong and have no symptoms at all. They're being told they could inadvertently wipe out their grandparents and their immune-suppressed neighbors without even trying. People are being asked to trust scientific models and act in a way 
that will help complete strangers. It's not like they're being asked to put their lives on the line. They're being asked to stay home. They are not in a foxhole fighting a foreign enemy. They are being asked to sit on the couch and watch Netflix instead of going out. That has proven to be too big an ask for some people. People right now are showing you who they are. Believe them. The way the virus spreads fascinates me because it's in keeping with the way that we affect one another and the collective culture at large through every one of our choices. To be able to connect the dots between skipping the bar one night and saving some random old person you don't know is challenging, to say the least. But it opens us up to taking our lives and our choices much more seriously than we normally do. And that's a very good thing. People are being asked to put our mutual well-being above money, success, and attention. We are being asked to watch the heartbreak of stores, restaurants, and businesses being closed to keep us all safer, and trust that there will be a way back when we reach the other side. We watch people lose the work they depended on to survive with vague hope that there will be a safety net to catch them. It's a natural response to the chaos to think in terms of how we're going to survive. But this flashpoint involves all of us. That means it has the full weight of all of us in finding a solution. If the economy stops for one person, that's a huge problem. The landlord and the utility companies aren't concerned about how that will play out for you as an individual. But if the economy stops for us all, then the solutions must encompass us all. There's no sense of personal shame that anyone needs to carry around the way that they do when it has only happened to them. We will get through this and everything and everyone will be changed by it. For that reason, the fact that you are living in such a historic moment, I wish you would take the time to write about your experience. It will inform future generations as well as getting it up and out of you so you can feel healthy enough to face whatever is coming next. When we look in our rearview mirrors, honestly, we must acknowledge that most of the events that we thought would be our undoing ended up creating entirely new avenues for growth and expansion. Most of the people and events in our lives that we hold most dear are there because something didn't go the way we thought it should. We have no reason to assume this will be any different. It also helps to remind yourself that you really don't know what anything means. None of us do. We just think we do, and that's our undoing. It's the thinking ahead of every awful outcome that messes us up. Once we conjure up a thought, we either call it into existence or we fall apart when it doesn't come to pass. Be very careful with your thoughts. They are way more powerful than you can imagine. If you're going to conjure, picture a world that is healthier, more loving, and just. Let's picture a world that is ruled by higher levels of spiritual awareness instead of this one that rotates around greed, deception, and hatred. You might want to go back to Episode 5 of Rebirth Revolution to take a refresher course on the attributes of the higher levels versus the lower levels. We can never know until much further down the line what comes out of the chaos. It is often something wonderful that would not have been possible otherwise. The fact that it is all happening at once means that we have a better shot at finding solutions that address multiple issues at the same time. This could be such a wonderful turning point for the planet. This could be a wonderful turning point for you and for others. Please hold a space for both of those to be true.
Everyone has gone through life flashpoints and the events that make us reset. It is part of the earth experience. We've all been touched by death, relationships ending, jobs ending, health problems, and the like. These are the events that try our souls. These are the events that change us on a cellular level. Those moments can be very isolating. When you're going through a really rough time, you will have people who acknowledge your pain in the beginning, but then people expect you to get on with it. They go back to their real lives and have an expectation that you will too. No one really knows what it's going to take for you to get your life back on track. They just expect that you will do that without making a big fuss about it or needing help from others. That sense of being alone in your anxiety, anguish, and pain is so difficult. But here we all are in a flashpoint that affects us all. That doesn't happen very often. A global pandemic will do that for you. Our bodies, along with everything that can affect them, are part of the creation and as such have laws that were baked into the system. Viruses are going to do what viruses do and human bodies will respond according to their own set of rules. It's not personal. The beauty of science and the documentation of events is that we can detect patterns and measure how effective previous responses have been. The importance of this type of pattern matching cannot be overstated. So we now have some information that tells us how we can slow this spread down so as not to overwhelm our medical resources. This all makes logical sense. Using these scientific models, and yes, science is a thing, we can extrapolate ways in which we can make the damage worse or ways we can keep it from hitting us all at the same time. Are people going to listen to this and act accordingly? Some will, but as we know, there are people here in this school who are in all different grade levels of spiritual awareness. Those at the lower levels will not likely act in a way that will keep others safe. That seems crazy, but people at low levels are still all about themselves. The fact that they want to go to a public gathering is of more importance than any potential threat that this could present to anyone else. In the mind of a low-level person, there is nobody else that matters. It's pretty shocking to see how fired up some people get about going against all reasonable advice the advice that will keep the elderly, the cancer patients, the medical staff safer, that's because they are not the grandparent, the cancer patient, the doctor, or the nurse. They can't be bothered by what happens to those people. It's not their problem. This is a time when people will reveal themselves. It will not all be good. They will reveal themselves by the choices they make the attitude they project, the solutions they suggest. They will show it in who they think should be helped out of this solution. Pay close attention. People who are not concerned about the safety of others will never be concerned about your safety. This you need to know. People who are cavalier are still working at the lower levels of spiritual awareness, and you need to deal with them knowing that. I know that people think that the worst thing we can do right now is to politicize this pandemic, but the pandemic has brought into sharp focus that we do indeed rely on those we elect to lead us in times like this. In fact, we rely on our government to know about the possibilities of the very real things that can happen and to plan accordingly. We need those we elect to be smart and methodical. We need for them to be secure enough to hire the very smartest people in each field and then listen to their wisdom. We need people who have a high level of spiritual awareness 
So they are working to lift up everyone, not just themselves. We need people who are forward thinking so we can plan and be prepared for every eventual outcome. We also need people who are comfortable with the fact that we are all, each and every one of us on this planet, in this together. There are no borders that are recognized by viruses or natural disasters. This is exactly the time to get political. Much of what is happening is because of our government's response and much of what will happen to pull us out of this will be decisions that the government must make. To say that it should not be politicized is to say that there should be no checks and balances. This is low level behavior. Everything and everyone are subject to checks and balances. That is what makes us better. If we are not allowed to say what is not working, we have no hope of implementing something that will work. We must all stay engaged, choose wisely, hold all politicians' feet to the fire, and demand that they remember that they are working for all of us. We must insist that the fixes reflect the principles of the higher levels of spiritual awareness. The solutions must lift everyone up, not just those at the top. We can't afford to live on the hope that they will share the wealth. Those operating at low levels of spiritual awareness are panicked and will double down on their behaviors that are ruled by greed, hatred, and entitlement. Those of us who are working to create a planet that is ruled by a higher level of spiritual awareness must double down on our behaviors and choices that reflect love and compassion for ourselves and others. We must remind ourselves daily that this is all designed for our greater good, that this difficult lesson holds within it the kernel that we can grow into a better world, that each day that we have faith in the system is a day that we can know that we are held and loved and protected. We are here to grow and to demonstrate growth. Today is your day to shine. Let's get down to the real nitty gritty. Just typing this gives me an error because it's a term that is so old and out of date. It was a term that meant getting down to what was essential. I offer this up for two reasons. I have a link in the episode description to a YouTube clip that will delight you. You need to check it out. It's amazing. I can't even tell you how many times I've watched it. Hopefully, that term will, through this song, become a brain worm, something you will hear when you most need it. As you go about your new life in the age of this pandemic, please remind yourself that all you need to do is to get right down to the real nitty gritty. When you find yourself overwhelmed with what is, or swimming in a sea of imagined future devastation, let it remind you that you have the most powerful antidote within you. You don't have to be the perfect pandemic performer. You just need to remember the essentials. Simply be loving and patient with those you are near, whether that means your family or those in the public realm who are working hard to make life possible. Show every ounce of strength and leadership that you can muster on any given day. Be the light in every space you inhabit. Have fun whenever possible. Eat good food. Consume good content. And most of all, be safe. As always, you are loved exactly as much as every other person on the planet not one ounce more or one ounce less. Be well. <laughs>